Welcome back, everybody. We're back in the Rogue Legacy again. Uh, we just started another run with our uh, Barbarian character. Um, what's nifty about uh, this enemy is if it bounces enough time, it will die. Not really sure why it does that, other than I guess you get yourself into an impossible situation where you can't help but take damage from that enemy type. I guess they thought that was unfair, so they created a situation where if the, uh, whatever you want to call it, ball and chain ball uh, bounces too many times off the ball, it will die. So this is going to be... Oh, we found the carnival. Great. Uh, carnival is... Okay, this is going to be the um, dagger carnival in minigame. I believe there's a couple different versions of the carnival minigame. One of them is using the axes. The other one, I believe, is using these um, daggers. So, I'm not very good at the dagger minigame. I'm a little bit better at the uh, spacing out where the axe can go. Um, I suppose if I practiced enough, I would become better at this, but um, probably not going to hit another... If I hit another one, I'll be... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Speak too soon, I say. Um, yeah, I'm not very good at that one. Uh, again, the cycle of this game is you want to try to get as far into the castle as you can and collect as much money as possible. Some of that is luck-based because, uh, particularly early in the game, uh... Getting a bag of money, which would be a hundred gold, is like a godsend. Um, because most most times you're just gonna get a single coin, which is worth uh, ten gold. So there, I just got twenty gold. Here's thirty gold. Um, but it certainly doesn't make up for getting a bag of gold, which I believe the um, this provides you at least one bag of gold every time you find a treasure chest. Um, so the more treasure chests you find, the better, obviously. And then the deeper you get into the dungeon, the more difficult the enemies become. They become higher level, uh, which means they take more damage to take out. Um, but in addition, uh, they do provide you a little bit more gold. Uh, and the deeper you get into the dungeon, the more the uh, breakable items are going to produce more and more money. Um, certainly, like I said, it's a it's a luck-based thing where in you can end up. Well, here I am in the Maya. Um, the Maya is much more difficult than the area I'm in. It's sort of like a tier three area, um, but. I'm more likely to run into, say, hitting one of these items and having it um, produce more than just one gold coin. Enemies definitely, um, but they're very much more, they're much more difficult. So the more money that I'm able to gather, uh, the better that is for me. Uh, this again should take me into the Maya, which I'm just going to yeep right out of not really worth my time to deal with the Maya. I mean, unless you have a pretty good case to try to uh, get through the Maya without taking much damage, as in you have lots of open areas, it tends to not really be worth it. Uh, you can certainly get lucky and find a treasure chest like I did in knife one of my early runs uh, that gives me 300 gold, which is invaluable. But, you know, obviously the, the the theme is to try to maximize your gold on each run. And a lot of it is kind of based on um, how good are you at the game? You know, what you mastered some of the... Yeah, we're going to attempt to do this. Uh, but I took fucking damage right there, so... Unfortunate. But, um, like I said... The ideal is to uh, maximize your damage as best as you can and to um, try to go deeper and deeper into the dungeon 
um, so that you are able to take on uh, more and more enemies. But one of the things that uh, we'll eventually get to is I'll be able to get a little bit more vampiric armor and um, runes, which should allow me to go a little bit deeper into these dungeons as we go forward. Um, when you're running low on health, you don't want to drop down on top of the enemy. That's never a good thing. Unless you do a down strike, which is perfectly possible. Uh, I hate upside down characters, but I'm going to show it off this one time. I'm not going to do this again. Um, I'm going to avoid these like the plague. Uh, we're going to upgrade the barbarian here, I think. And then probably okay, we've got enough money for uh, an additional strength upgrade, so we'll do that. Um, but this is just so disorienting. Um, I'm sure there's probably somebody out there that can do deep runs with the upside down. You know, without cheating, obviously, and turning your screen upside down. Um, I, I don't know, this is just... This is a little, this is a little much for me. I don't know how long, I don't think this runs can be all that long. Even with the chicken. This is me trying to go down, but every time I try to go down, I press up instead of down. And then this is a very difficult room, regardless of being upside down, so... Yep, but it didn't last very long. That's alright. We'll, um... We've showed off the, uh, the mechanics, so let's not ever do that again. Oh well, yeah, I don't have enough money for anything right now. We're just gonna have to go and dump the 60 coins that we won um, into Sharon's belly. Um, so this is another one of those things where they've switched my HP and my um, MP gauge. Uh, this doesn't really play that big of a deal because the HP and MP gauge are more or less the same. When you get later in the game, particularly with a Barbarian, you don't want to do that. Because uh, barbarians have much higher health, but they have lower and they have lower MP. But they're also terrible magic casters. They're designed to essentially be damage, uh, you know, walking tanks, if you will. Um, like the worst thing you could possibly do is you know, make a barbarian a mage, um, but. In that situation, it's like, you know, re-roll your character, because you don't want a Barbarian that's also got more MP than HP. And I died again because I was being too aggressive. So one of my favorite classes is definitely the Knight slash Paladin. Um... I don't end up using the shield um, to its fullest. Uh, it does take MP when you get hit, and I have a uh, quirk that makes me afraid of chickens, so randomly, instead of getting a piece of chicken, a chicken will pop out and I'll have to kill the chicken, roasted chicken with the head cut off uh, before I can partake in this delicious meat. Um, but one of the, definitely one of the big things I love about the Paladin class is that it doesn't seem to really lose strength. It tends to have the same, if not more strength. Well, they don't have, it doesn't have more strength than say uh, there's a later class called uh, Shinobi slash Okage uh, that has higher attack. And most likely doesn't have as high an attack as that class, but 
definitely high enough um, night cape. That's that's not a weapon or armor upgrade. Sounds like a chicken popped out of some something. Don't know exactly where that popped out of, but usually it's a breakable that comes out of. Uh, because you have uh, whatever you want to call these picture frame mimics, you know, they're enemies. Uh, you'll see that I swing it like nearly every picture frame, regardless of if it's uh, a mimic or not. Alright, we're doing good on collecting um, armor and such right now, so... Another quirk you'll find about my playstyle is I don't use my mana as much as I should. Um, and I tend to... Stay away from the mage base classes because, again, I don't tend to use my magic quite like I should. So this is a this is a part partial heal. It's not a full heal. Um, it heals both your MP and HP. Certain percentage, anyway. That guy's a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna avoid him. No lucky. Okay, so what I can do here is jump and then back dash. Um, and then once I do that, once I touch the uh, treasure chest, it opens up for me. I'm gonna guess this is probably going to be the death of me. I don't have nearly enough health to take this kind of guy on, nor do I have enough attack to sort of just get up in his face and just start slashing. I'm not going to be upgrading my magic, I don't think, too much, other than maybe some, maybe a little bit off screen. We do want to try to go after the vampirum, vampiric armor uh, as we get it. Uh, hopefully, also, I know this is going to be probably much later than I'll be playing this game, but there are stronger pieces of equipment uh, that get both the ability to absorb HP and MP uh, in the same breath. Uh, like I said, I don't think we'll get that far, um, particularly with the armor, because that tends to be high-level armor. Down slash. I can do the down slash. It's just it's it's easier to do with a uh, D-pad, and I'm operating off of a uh, 360 controller and using the. Um, I mean, which do you choose on a 360 controller? Do you use the analog stick, which makes it more difficult to do the down slash, or do you use the really crappy D-pad that's provided? That it's like you don't use it. You just sort of use that as like. You can just cycle through weapons in, you know, Gears of War or something. Not used, not supposed to be used for, you know, playing Super Turbo or whatever. Uh, this is, this is, this section right here with the two hit things is the bane of my existence. Because what I'm supposed to do here is use my shield. But generally the shield, even with the shield up, it'll bump me off. And then I have to go down again and, and redo the thing, which means I take more damage. I'm looking back through my family and I'm counting the number of guys that have died. Uh, there's an achievement if you can beat the, the whole game, the entire, ga the entire game, in less than 10 airs. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm already past ten. I'm not getting that achievement, obviously. Um, you're seeing I'm, avo evade, I'm avoiding the mage units because I, I just I don't know. You know, I want to be I want to be able to hit the stuff with my sword and the mage just. When you run out of MP with the mage, you are up shit creek. Great, it's great while you have the, the you know, the, the MP, or if you can get, you know, one of those brats to increase your MP, but, you know, as soon as you have to use your sword, you, you can really feel, you know, the difference. And, you know, this, um, class type I'm using right now, it benefits very much for, from a later, like the stronger you get, the stronger this enemy gets, because it's so heavily critical based that if you can get yourself into a point where you're producing a very high critical percentage rate, the combination of a ruins, uh, upgrade, and armor, um, this class becomes pretty broken. Um, I have a a deficiency where I randomly see enemies that aren't there and can't damage me. And if I come back into this room, that enemy will probably not be there anymore. But, uh, yep. So we can use the crap out of these to try and not take damage. I'm going to probably attack these guys. It's really sort of pointless if I attack them. Yep. Two seconds in the mine, I'm dead. I really do like the Paladin class a lot in this game. Like, it's so well balanced that, like, I don't know. I guess I'm a dirty Ryu player or something. You know, I like the classes to have everything, but not be really great in anything, you know? Give me, you know, give me more attack than ever, than most classes, but not the most attack that you can get out of any class. Kind of middle, you know? Nice, boring piece of bread. And what can the bread be? It can be a bologna sandwich, a ham sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, toasted, you know, make it into French bread. It could be anything you want it to be. Is it really good at any one particular thing? No, it's not going to be a steak. It's not going to be like, oh man, this bread's like, I'm so glad I had this this bread instead of the steak that I could have gotten. So I do have an ability that makes all of these uh, things that you're supposed to down slash open. Um, so that's that's nice. Not, I mean it. Certain levels we're gonna see later on, I think, are gonna really showcase where that ability is like super great. But I don't know. In a lot of these runs, we're not gonna run into a ton of those things, so it's not really gonna be that big of a deal. say my least favorite enemy type in this game you're probably gonna hear me complain about this some more is the eyeball uh, whereas the uh, spike guy can shoot in four different directions those guys are annoying because they, they track you I hate the eyeballs the eyeballs are always right out of your range like that guy right there he's within my striking distance every time I swing my sword he's always you know, within distance of my ground-based slash. The eyeballs are always placed just above it, so you have to jump half. It's such an obnoxious enemy to deal with because you jump into it if you take damage, you take crash damage. But if you don't jump, then you can't hit him. I'm gonna go, not going to really go through this Maya too much. 
Let me see if I can't get some easy money, which I cannot. And then, yeah, we'll go the other way. But what we're really looking for is we're really looking for the entrance to the boss. Uh, entrance. Uh, because there's always guaranteed two pieces. Uh, the two treasure chests that I can get. And in addition to that, uh, the statues to the left and right of the, uh, boss door, uh, always have chicken in a, um, um MP, uh, brought, whatever you want to call that. Uh, eventually those turn into mimics. Uh, on the first playthrough, they're not until you get to the Maya, but on subsequent playthroughs, the treasure chest can always become always good to take random 45 damage, which is like uh, about a third of my health there, a little bit more than a third of my health. Yep, that takes me up to the Maya. I'm gonna avoid that again. Like I said, if you can if you can find a nice easy room where there's only one guy in it, definitely worth exploring. Or if you can see, like, get to a treasure chest really easy. But it's really not worth your time when you're at such a weak level. I'm gonna try to avoid uh, very difficult areas. Some maps are better, like this, like this particular zone I'm in right now. Or only looks like there's only two enemies. Okay, here's the boss score. So you, I got a blood cape, which is great, and then I've got mm, probably about 150 point money there, and then chicken, which is super important. Pro entry 2, although I am the eldest child, I am not my father's favorite. I've always known he planned to leave me with nothing. If I find a cure, everything will change. A victor will earn nothing less than the throne upon his passing. Upon my ascension, my wife and children shall move back to the royal quarters, back to the royal city, where we once again will be treated with the respect we deserve. No longer will we stand for gossip and petty slander of my cousins. The other dukes shall bow as we pass. I am keeping my priorities clear. Conquer the castle, find the cure, collect my reward. So I believe all of the journal entries are written by the same, um, member, cousin, whatever you want to call it, of your family. Though I'm not 100% sure they could be written by other members, uh, as... Great. Always good to jump right into it. Sir Useless has been slain. About right. Even though he's, li he's listed as a divine paladin, he made fourteen thousand, fourteen hundred dollars. I'm gonna level up my armor a little bit here because I do want to be able to purchase uh, some of this and be able to immediately equip it. Uh, the more vampiric stuff I can put, I think the deeper my runs are gonna get. Um, but that'll be based on how well some of my subsequent runs go. Because the more, well not the armor, but the more upgrades and um, enchantments I buy, the more expensive they become, which is in some ways obnoxious. I mean, I get it with the enchantress, but, you know, you, you buy... you know, three or four on each one of your weapons and armors, and all of a sudden, like, your next upgrade becomes, like, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000 gold. It's like, okay, you better figure out what you're gonna put on everything for your build. Because unlike getting armor, it's not a flat fee. 